Prepare to discard your mental blinders. Counterthink with Mike Adams, live on InfoWars.com. Welcome to Counterthink. This is Mike Adams here, your host today. A special episode, kind of a, an emergency broadcast, you might say. I'm filming this in my home studio instead of going into the Austin studio with Alex Jones. We've, we're in an emergency situation here with the civil war that's about to unfold in America, and that's the topic of today's show. And I told the InfoWars crew that, look, I need, you know, going in, driving into Austin and doing the whole studio thing there, it's awesome. The production quality is fantastic, but right now I need to do a few episodes that are urgent, that are timely, that need to be turned around uh, very quickly. And then in the future, we'll resume episodes where I interview other people and so on. But right now, and also they've got some construction going on there too. They're building a big new studio. Uh, once that studio is done, it's going to be a lot easier for all of us because, you know, InfoWars is expanding like crazy, really. They've got, you know, the War Room. They've got David Knight. They've got the main broadcast show. Then they've got my show and other shows. They're expanding like crazy, and right now they're kind of short on studio space. So anyway, for all those reasons, I'm going to be recording from my home studio for a while, bringing you very crucial news and information. So thank you for joining me today. The topic for today is the Second Civil War. And in the next segment here, I'm going to talk about exactly what the demands are of leftists, because they're making very specific, insane, deranged demands that I have said, I, I've categorized these as a war on civilization. Leftists realize that their ideas don't work. And as ideas are spreading across the internet and people are waking up, people are walking away from the Democrat movement. It's called hashtag walk away. Democrats are losing elections. They're losing power. They're losing control over institutions. They've been losing one Supreme Court decision after another. They lost the White House. They lost the Senate. They lost the House. And they're going to lose the Supreme Court for a generation to come. And that's because Democrats' ideas don't work. Socialism doesn't work. Look at Venezuela. It fails. Communism doesn't work. It's collapsed. You know, in, in, in many cases, I mean, there's still communist China, but that's kind of a combination of uh, police state tyranny, socialism, communism, and fascism. And it's going to have its problems, too. It's going to crater in many ways that maybe I'll talk about. But the thing is that because Democrats' ideas don't work, they now have to resort to trying to overthrow the system. We're talking about a nationwide lynch mob of insane, deranged lunatics known as Democrats. And they're trying to destroy America. They're trying to overthrow the presidency. They're trying to nullify the outcome of the election because they didn't win. And they're now making demands. And these demands are an attack on civilization. If they get their way, if they get their demands, they would collapse the world. Human civilization as we know it today would cease to exist in the same way that Venezuela as a nation is ceasing to exist. It's in a state of accelerated collapse. That's precisely because of leftist policies. And North Korea versus South Korea, same ex exact genetics, right? Same people, same heritage, completely different outcomes because the socialism, fascism, and communism, the tyranny of North Korea doesn't work. But the productivity and free market economics and distributed power in terms of um, how society is structured, that works very well for South Korea. And so they have the highest GDP per capita of any nation in the world, even more than Japan, more than the United States, more than Canada. It's an extraordinary tale of caution. But leftists are demanding that we either go full-on communists, full-on fascists, or they're going to destroy our society, overrun our nation, invade our borders, execute our president, and they want to murder people like you and I and lock us up and steal our land, take over our businesses and do anything they can do to destroy America and destroy the concept of individual liberty. And that's the truth about what they want. So when we come back after this break, I'm going to lay out for you the specific demands that these radical leftists are making and why we must prevail in restoring and defending liberty for our country. Stay with us here on Counterthink. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to Counterthink. This is Mike Adams here. We're under attack in this country. We're under assault. We're being invaded. Leftists are now making deranged, lunatic demands 
about what they want to see happen in America, which is basically the, the overrunning and overthrowing of the country. You see, Democrats have stopped pretending that they love America or that they want to defend the Constitution or that they even want to defend free speech. They stopped pretending. What they want now is to completely destroy the system that we have and overthrow America and replace it with their fascist slash communist tyrannical regime. And there are specific demands they have in this process. So I want to show you this. This is a screenshot from New York City protests. And as you see here, they have their list of four demands, which is abolish profit, abolish prisons, abolish cash bail, and abolish borders. Now, this is part of the abolish ICE movement, ICE Immigrations and Customs Enforcement. And this, this idea, it's so insane, but I, I want to go through this list with you so that you fully understand what these radical leftists are asking for. Abolish profit is saying that free enterprise should be abolished. They, they want to dismantle the free market system in America. They want a centrally planned communist-style economy run by government bureaucrats who decide what wage you have to pay every worker. They, actually, they seize your business. You won't even be able to, to have a private business. The private corporations, small business, will all be outlawed, taken over, seized by the government. Just look at what they did in Venezuela. Same exact thing. This took over all these manufacturing uh, factories and organizations, and then they ran them into the ground because that's what fascists do. That's, that's what socialists do. They destroy everything. Look how they've destroyed Detroit. Look how they've destroyed Los Angeles. They've destroyed every country that they've had a hand in or, or they put on the path to destruction. So abolishing profit is about saying that you are evil if you innovate. If you are a producer in society, you are a bad person, according to the left. I mean, go read Atlas Shrugged. It's the same thing. This is happening now. If you produce, they want to punish you. In fact, these deranged Democrats, they want to confiscate your production so that they can take a piece off the top of that, and then they can distribute it to their voters who don't produce. And by the way, one of the other things they're demanding is guaranteed government jobs for everyone. This is a Bernie Sanders special, kind of a Bernie Sanders sandwich <laughs> with a special kind of sandwich that I won't mention on the air here. Uh, Bernie Sanders wants guaranteed government jobs for everyone, which means that people will be paid by the government to sit around and do nothing. It's a guaranteed government job. Doing what? Bernie Sanders doesn't say. What do you mean doing what? Why should anybody have to do anything? It's a government job, right? So taxpayers foot the bill. And people sit around and do nothing, and they get paid as a guaranteed government income. You're going to have millions, tens of millions of people sitting around doing nothing, working for the government, getting paid to do nothing. And this is, this is called abundance. Let me tell you, this ends in collapse if you do that. Because you're punishing the productive workers of society, and then you're subsidizing the non-productive members of society who do nothing. We've seen this before. Former Soviet Union, centrally planned economies, they always lead to collapse. They always lead to, frankly, destitution, massive human suffering, starvation, poverty. It's not a pretty picture. Look at Venezuela right now today, and you get a pretty good idea of what this would be. And who's that 28-year-old woman who ran for Congress in New York? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is her name, right? And she's a radical communist fascist. She calls herself a democratic socialist, but she agrees with this idea of banning profit. She doesn't like a free market system. None of these people do. So they want to abolish the free market system, which if you think about it, that's also abolishing the right to engage in contract. It's one of the most fundamental rights that we have today, the right to engage in contract, the right to uh, purchase something and agree to pay for it, the right to say that you want raw materials in your factory and so you can produce something and maybe sell it for a profit and then pay the raw materials suppliers who themselves are paying someone else. These are all contracts. All the logistics, all the delivery of the goods, all the marketing and sales of the products, the production, these are all using contracts. Leftists want to essentially abolish contracts, the right to contract as a private citizen because they say that only the government can plan what you want to do. The government will plan production. 
Oh, and by the way, you'll live a life without socks and toilet paper because the government will misapply production schedules because they don't understand supply and demand. They don't understand free market economics whatsoever. And the government is totally incompetent. And, but people like Ocasio-Cortez wants the government to run your life and to make your economic decisions for you. So you'll have no socks, no underwear, no toilet paper, no food. You'll be starving. You'll be literally wiping your butt with leaves. <laughs> I mean, or if you can find toilet paper, you know, it'll be a black market price because the government will set price controls on it, which means the supply will be totally wiped out because the government seizes the factory that makes toilet paper and then they, they drive it into the ground because government workers don't know how to do anything that's real. All they know how to do is take money from people, confiscate money and give it to somebody else and punish you and weaponize the government to use it, you know, as a, as a, as a hammer, a sledgehammer over your head to bash you in the head and steal from you and force you to do things. That's leftism. That's what liberals want in America. So this, this idea, getting back to the march, this idea of abolishing profit, which has become central now to Democrats and liberals in America, this idea would lead to so much mass human suffering and, and, so much destitution, loss of economic productivity, loss of quality of life. Again, just look at Venezuela. But this is a central pillar of what they want. And that shows you how dangerous they truly are. Now, let's go to the next one. Uh, abolish prisons. They also want to abolish prisons. Now, think about what this means. If you abolish prisons, what's the function of prisons? Well, you have... You have dangerous, violent people in society. You have, you have murderers and rapists and child traffickers and people who rob homes and people who you know, commit violent crimes. And maybe some white-collar crime in there, too. you got a few fraudsters here and there, but most of it's violent crime. And, you, you know, drunk drivers even, whatever. You, you want to take these people off the streets for some period of time, you know, according to the, how bad their crime was. If they murder people, maybe you want to take them off the streets forever. But you want to separate dangerous people from the rest of civil society. That's the function of prisons. That's why you have prisons everywhere. I mean, in every country, you have some form of, of prison system. Because there are some people that you just are too dangerous to allow to be walking around, you know, children's parks or just to be on the streets. They're just too dangerous. They're, they're violent criminals. They're psychotic criminal people, right? That's why we have prisons. So the left wants to abolish prisons. Now, in doing this, they would have to set all these people free. So you take all the violent criminals, rapists, child molesters, child traffickers, and human sex traffickers, and gun runners, and drug smugglers, and all these people, and you just let them loose in the streets of America. This is what the left wants. They want to abolish prisons, and they say they want to do that because they say that prisons are not socially just, right? They want, they want social justice. They say there's too many minorities in the prisons. Well, it's never occurred to them that maybe that those are the people committing the crimes. I mean, the prison system, it's not like it's full of people who never deserve to be there. There, there are a few of those cases, but by and large, most people that are in prison... They deserve to be there, and you better be glad they're in there. Otherwise, they'd be out, you know, raping your daughter or stealing your car, burning down your home or shooting you. There, there, there are people that you don't want running loose in society. That's why you have prisons. The left wants to abolish these prisons. And along with that, they want to abolish, if you think about it, this necessitates abolishing police and it's an extension of the sanctuary state policies that they've already started pushing in 20 plus cities across America. They want complete lawlessness across our country. That's what the left actually wants. And when we come back, we'll talk more about how they want to abolish borders and see America invaded as well. So stay with us here on Counterthink. We'll be right back after this break with more. Welcome back to Counterthink. Mike Adams here. We're continuing our discussion about how America is being invaded and how these left-wing socialist, fascist, communists, I'm not sure, Marxism, probably, Marxist is probably the best uh, description. They want to end the free market system. They want to end privately owned companies. They want a centrally planned economy, as the communists do. 
And they want to abolish all the prisons and set everybody free who's a criminal. So they want America's streets to be running loose with murderers, rapists, arsonists, child traffickers, child molesters, I don't know, every violent criminal you can think of. They want them running loose on the streets because they say that, that imprisoning people is wrong somehow. That that's bad. Uh, somehow they, these leftists, I mean, Democrats, they're insane at this point, but they actually believe that if there's a minority person in prison, you know, African-American or Latino person or what have you, that that person should never be, be put in prison, that that's mean, and that there should be sanctuary in America for all criminals. And they've already started the pilot program of this by having sanctuary cities where they say, hey, we're not going to follow federal law. We're going to protect murderers and rapists, especially when they're illegals. And even when there are court cases, we'll have juries in our city, like San Francisco, find them innocent. We'll do jury nullification of the entire system of law. And we, we the governors and mayors, I mean, Jerry Brown is part of this too in California. We governors and mayors will pass laws or refuse to enforce laws in order to protect illegals and violent criminals who are in our cities murdering and raping American citizens. This is how they betray America. This is, this is what they're actively doing to try to destroy this country. And we're not even done with the list here. We, we've got to talk about abolishing ICE. That's actually the bigger topic here. But think about if, if, you, if, if leftists get what they want, if they get their wishes, they would have the streets filled with violent criminals running around, raping, shooting, burning, destroying everything. There would be no prisons, and, the, and effectively there would be no police. Because what's the point of having police if you can't send anybody to prison? What's the point, right? And they hate the police. The left hates the police. They think that cops are all racist. They think cops are Nazis. You know, of course, they think all white people are Nazis, too. They think everybody's a Nazi unless you're a radical, extreme, delusional leftist. But they, they will say that cops are bad and that prisons are bad and that uh, private business is bad. And I just, I mean, I mean, I'll continue this list here, but just stop for a moment and think. Have these left-wing people never thought about what would happen if they get their wish? Like, what kind of society do they really think it would be if you let all the violent criminals loose and you fire all the police and you have no law enforcement whatsoever, total lawlessness in society. And I have to imagine these, these, these rich Hollywood, white, liberal actors living in their little mansions, thinking that they're so famous and so important. I just have to imagine, like just this wave of machete-wielding, you know, violent Latino criminals, MS-13 gang members, just, just like, like a swarm of locusts just sweeping through those neighborhoods, raping, pillaging, looting, stealing, and murdering, just burning everything and leaving you know, with all the gold. Because that's what would happen. And it's, it's strange to me that leftists have never thought about the repercussions of what would happen if they get what they want. It's like, be careful what you wish for because you're wishing for your own suicide. You, leftists, you know, Hollywood people and others, you're, you are wishing for suicide. You are begging to be raped and murdered and have your homes burned down and looted and pillaged and have your country overrun and have California uh, taken back as part of Mexico. You are begging for your own annihilation, really, is what they're begging for. There's, there's some twisted psychology behind all this. Maybe I'll get to that at some point here, too. But let's move on to the uh, abolish the borders, because this is the big one. They, they're marching around the country saying abolish ICE. Essentially, they're saying that America should have no borders whatsoever, that anybody who shows up, anybody who just can hire an airplane to land at a community airport in Miami or something, or Texas for that matter, South Texas, if you just fly into Texas, then uh, you're supposed to, what, be welcomed as a citizen and be given a driver's license and the right to vote, and you start getting welfare and Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security benefits too? Really? Yes, that's what the left wants. That's what they want. A human wave of people, they just walk across the border. Leftists say that, well, they should be welcome in America. They say there's no such thing as an illegal person. You can't have an illegal person. Everybody's welcome. And it just gets into this weird kind of new age talk, like we're all the same. It's a total unification, you know, humanity, love, love everyone. And it's like, really, because you do know that 
a lot of these people are drug runners, child traffickers, you know, rapists, murderers, violent criminals. And they are not coming to America to be peaceful citizens and participate in a constitutional republic. I mean, some of them are, but there's also a very large number of people who are actually coming to America to steal and loot and run drugs and not follow our laws as proven by the fact that they're violating the law in crossing the border in the first place. So this idea of abolishing ICE is saying that anybody, this is what the left wants, anybody who just shows up in America should be granted citizenship benefits and voting rights. And you know what? This would collapse our country. This would collapse our nation because it's not an equitable arrangement. It's not like people have a, a trade with America. It's not like immigrants come in and then they contribute to society and, and they go back and forth between different countries where freedoms are respected and where there's similar wages and all these things. They are coming in to milk our country. They're coming in to collect the entitlements. They're coming in to uh, take jobs from American workers, especially African-American workers, and to send that money back down south through Western Union, which is what they do. I don't know how many billion dollars they send every year, but basically just siphoning cash out of the U.S. system, taking the jobs of American workers, sending that money south across the border. And, and, the, and on top of that, they're running drugs and they're, and they're committing crimes. And again, not all of them, but enough of them to make this a big problem. I got rear-ended on the road in Texas by a, an illegal who had no driver's license and no insurance. They just drive around all the roads with no insurance, no driver's license, and half the time they can't even drive straight. And they drive like they're driving in Mexico. It's insane. I mean, it's like they think the shoulder is another lane. That's not another lane. That's, that, that's a shoulder. I mean, when you see people driving on the shoulder in Texas and they think it's another lane, you know, pretty good chance that's an illegal right there. But the police don't do anything about it. It's like they, they don't bother hauling them into court because the courts don't want to deal with them. It's, it's like you can't enforce anything. Or at least that's the way it was under Obama. I mean, maybe things will start changing now. But the, the point is, the point is, that leftists who want to abolish ICE, they want to see America invaded. They want to see America overrun. They're doing it on purpose. And they hate this country. They despise America. And they want to see America crushed and destroyed from within. And illegal immigration is the way that they want to accomplish that. It's a new style of warfare. And it's the kind of warfare that they're calling for because they despise this country. So there's a lot more to talk about here. We're under assault. Stay with us here on Counterthink. I'll be right back after this break to continue. All right, we're back on Counterthink. America is being invaded, and we're going down the list of demands that the radical left is now making, including abolishing ICE. Now, I want you to think carefully about this, because if you live in your own home or your own apartment, and you have a front door, probably, right? And you get to decide... Who comes in that door and who doesn't come in that door? And the purpose of the door is to keep people out of your home or your apartment that you don't want in your home. Maybe you don't trust them. Maybe you don't know them. You haven't checked them out yet. Maybe they're violent. Who knows? But you have a door because you have kind of a sovereign territory, let's say, in your home or your apartment. That's your space. And that's a space where you can deny people entry. That's called having a border. Now, every nation in the world has borders. In fact, it's part of the definition of a sovereign nation. And what is a nation? Well, it's a geopolitical entity that usually has a unique culture, sometimes has a unique language, has unique laws, and also has its own borders. And if you don't enforce those borders, effectively, you, you kind of lose your nation. So every nation in the world, in one form or another, enforces its borders. The United States, in fact, is one of the most lenient countries in the world in terms of not enforcing its borders. Most other countries have much more strict enforcement, including Mexico itself, including Canada in many ways, is more strict than the United States. So this idea that leftists believe that, that you, uh, the United States should uniquely stop enforcing its borders because the U.S. apparently has lost the moral authority to protect its borders in some way? Well, that makes no sense. What would actually happen 
I mean, think about it. If you have a nation where you're giving away free money through entitlement programs, you're giving away free health care, you're giving away, you know, in California, they get all these benefits as illegals coming in and just, they get free medical care, they get free education for their kids. And so many free benefits. So if you have no border, no immigration enforcement, and a wealth of benefits, and you're physically adjacent to a whole swath of countries where people are living in mass poverty because their systems of government have failed, and it, it's plunged them into poverty and destitution and desperation. What do you think is going to happen? You're going to have a human tidal wave migrating north, coming across the border, literally invading, flooding most of America with people who by and large, are poorly educated, who have come from countries where they have been taught it, that radical left-wing socialism is the answer, even though that's what's destroyed their own economies, people who don't understand what a constitutional republic is, people who rarely speak fluent English, and people who, frankly, are not looking to participate in our society as integrated American citizens. They're looking to occupy and overthrow our country, and that's what the left is encouraging. As I said earlier, it's a new kind of warfare. You know, in World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, and so on, it was kinetic warfare. They drop bombs and shoot bullets and launch missiles. You, you know, physically destroy your enemy so that you can occupy that territory with boots on the ground. That's the history of warfare, just different types of weapons. At you know, one time it was uh, catapults and swords and spears, and now it's you know, rifles and missiles and bombs and so on. But the newest weapon is actually children. Children are weapons now. Children at the border. Look how Time Magazine used that child image as a weapon to try to destroy Trump's credibility and invite more people to invade our country. Children are the weapons, and illegals are weapons, and refugees and migrants are weapons. They've used these weapons, they've deployed them to practically sweep through Western Europe. They're taking over Western Europe, they are conquering practically a continent, and they're doing it without firing a single shot. They're doing it by playing upon white guilt, White guilt is what has allowed now the UK to be practically overrun. Germany, overrun. France, overrun. Hungary, many other countries, overrun with Muslim migrants, refugees, and so on. And America is about to be overrun if these leftists get their way. They want to abolish border control and then use a weaponized mass migration, illegal aliens sweeping in, swarming into the country to take over physically with, with you know, boots on the ground in this case, except it's not boots, it's like tennis shoes, flip-flops on the ground everywhere all across America. And then they will be granted amnesty, given the right to vote, and they will vote the same way they voted in their home countries, they will vote radical left socialism, which is why the left wants this in the first place. It's not about just having no borders. To the left, this is about recruiting future voters. It's a voter recruitment drive. That's what open borders really are, a voter recruitment drive to bring all these people in, grant them amnesty, and all the while claiming that, oh, you're a humanitarian, this is all compassionate. Look at the little child, she's crying. You can't have her cry. You have to... You have to sacrifice your country so that that child stops crying. You have to give up everything. You have to stop protecting your border to stop that little child from crying because we can't stand here and watch children cry. That would be mean. This is their non-logic. This is what they actually say. It's, it's insane, of course, but this is, this is their system. And so anybody who then tries to, to, to put up borders or to enforce borders is called what? Oh, oh, you're a racist bigot. No, no, wait a minute. You're a Nazi. You're a Nazi, they say. Well, wait, well, how does that work? Because I, I thought Nazis invaded countries. Nazis crossed those borders illegally and swept into places like France and Russia and other countries. The Nazis invaded countries. 
in order to occupy and take them over. But we are stopping an invasion with border enforcement or border wall. We're stopping an invasion. We're doing the opposite of what the Nazis did. In fact, we're doing what the French resistance did. The French resistance tried to protect their country, enforce their borders, and stop invaders from coming in and taking over their country and turning it into just an expansion of Germany. The French resistance. American patriots today are, are really the French resistance of this modern warfare. We're not the Nazis. The Nazis are the invaders. The Nazis are the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. The Nazis are the people that are saying abolish ICE. And, I mean, if you want to carry out this metaphor, you know, if you really want to be accurate about the context here, that's the more accurate version. I'm not calling everybody Nazis. I'm just saying that when they call patriots Nazis, that makes no sense. That's nonsense. They don't know their history. Well, I mean, of course they don't. They don't know anything. They don't know anything about economics. They don't know anything about geopolitics. They don't know anything about history. I mean, to be a leftist today, you have to be functionally illiterate. But you think you're smart. You know, you think you're informed. Because all, you're just reading fake news all day. You're listening to NPR, which deceives you and brainwashes you and indoctrinates you with false information, pretending to be sophisticated. Because they have that, that voice, oh, welcome to NPR. Today, we're going to, you know... It sounds like um, educated talk, but underneath it all, they prey upon the fact that people are functionally illiterate, people are historically ignorant, people don't know much of anything about how nations really work and how nations fall, and why border enforcement is so crucial to the sustainability of any lasting nation. So this, this, this assembling of the border is an invasion tactic. In other words, we're in a war, but it's not a war of dropping bombs and shooting bullets and cruise missiles and that conventional kinetic weapon system. It's not that. It's a different kind of war. And we better wake up and recognize it for the war that it is. Because if we don't recognize it, we're going to lose our country. We need to build a wall. We need to reject the invading forces. We need to assert our national sovereignty and enforce our laws at the border and recognize that we are being invaded and occupied as a tactic to overthrow this constitutional republic. If we don't resist that, then we will have no nation remaining. Much more straight ahead. Stay with me here on CounterThink. All right, welcome back to our final segment here on CounterThink. Be sure to check out the other episodes at counterthink.com. And every episode airs each Sunday at 6 p.m. at Infowars.com. Also, be sure to check out our newly launching Reel.video. And that's the alternative to YouTube. Reel.video is a platform that respects your free speech. If you're a patriot, if you're someone who loves America, if you recognize the importance of strong borders and you're pro-First Amendment, pro-Second Amendment, uh, we welcome you to Reel.video. You can go there and request an account. It's just in the launch phase it's kind of in beta right now, so you might have to have a little patience with it, give it a couple days, but it's, it's in the launch phase, so check it out at Reel.Video. And thank you for sharing this episode and this show, CounterThink. And we've had a lot of really outstanding feedback, and I want to thank Alex Jones and the entire InfoWars crew for uh, allowing me to have this platform on InfoWars as well. You know, we are the new media for America. When I say we, I mean InfoWars uh, my contributions matter. Many other people are contributing as well. There are, there are lots of independent media organizations that are making an incredible difference because we're talking about the awakening of humanity here. And when you look at what the radical left is demanding today, you know, abolishing the borders, uh, shutting down all the prisons and setting the criminals free, confiscating all private business, having a centrally planned economy, basically economic communism, uh, where the government runs everything and controls all businesses. This model is disastrous. It is fatal for human civilization. It's fatal for society. And the, the underlying, the, the most important part of this message, really, is that when you go out to vote this November or any future election, I want you to understand that you are now voting for your survival. You're voting for your life. It's not 
it's it's no longer just voting about you know which group is in charge in Washington, Democrats versus Republicans. They used to be the same party. They're not the same party anymore. Trump has gone. Trump Trump has dragged the GOP kicking and screaming into a pro liberty movement. It's not all the way there yet, but it's very much in that direction. Pro America, pro liberty, strong borders, uh, free market economics conservative Supreme Court full of uh, constitutional originalists and so on. The Democrats have now gone radical left. I mean, crazy far left fascism. Democrats are now calling for these things that we've talked about today, you know, shutting down the border, shutting down prisons, shutting down the free market economic system, invading and overthrowing America. That's what the left is calling for now. The left is at war with civilization. The left is at war with America. They despise individual liberty. They despise a free market economy. They despise national sovereignty. The left has gone so far to the left now, they've attacked Bernie Sanders as not being radical enough. They, they've really attacked Bernie Sanders. They, they, they've attacked him for not calling for open borders. So think about this. A socialist, a deranged, lunatic socialist named Bernie Sanders, who has the, the craziest economic ideas imaginable, like, you know, guaranteed free government jobs for everyone. Doing what? Doing what? Uh, who, who cares? Just, just a salary for everyone. You work for the government now. What are you doing? Nobody knows. That's Bernie Sanders' idea. He is not left. He's not far left enough for the left today. The Democrats have gone so far to the left that they have left Bernie Sanders behind. Bernie Sanders is a moderate now, according to Democrats, that's how far left they've gone. They've gone off the deep end. They've gone into derangement. It's crazy how far they've gone left. So it's no longer then, my, my point is that it's, it's not just about voting for which tribe is in charge. It is now about voting for your survival. If you allow Democrats to gain power again, they will abuse that power they will weaponize government over us. They will overrun and destroy this nation. If Democrats ever get the White House or the Supreme Court again or the Senate, they will destroy America. And see, the thing is, the mask has come off now. As Alex likes to say, they've decloaked. You know, they, they, they've been in cloak mode all this time, acting like, oh, yeah, we support Second Amendment rights. We only want reasonable gun restrictions, right? Oh, uh, we support the Constitution. Oh, yeah, we're... We want to protect the borders. Remember the Clintons back in the 1990s? They were all anti-illegals. They were all talking about strong borders. You know, so many Democrats, you go back just 10, 15 years or 20 years, they were talking about strong borders. Now the mask has come off. They've decloaked. It's like they've ripped this mask off and underneath it is this, this like deranged, demonic, lunatic, radical uh, ghost of Stalin or something coming out of these people, like aliens coming out of their chest or something. And, or demons, they, and they just want to destroy everything that's good. They want to destroy the constitutional republic. They want to destroy individual liberty. They want to destroy economic abundance and innovation. They want to destroy entrepreneurship. They want to destroy law and order. They want to murder cops, execute President Trump, and round up conservatives and put them in you know, FEMA camps and re-education camps, what Hillary calls fun camps. Fun camps. Hillary's fun camp. Yeah, really? Uh... You people are insane, but that's what they want. So it's, it's like they are now for the first time telling you what they're actually going to do if they gain power. Finally, they're telling you just a hint of the truth because Democrats typically can only get elected when they lie to you about what they actually want. They lie to you and they say, oh, they're, they're going to respect, you know, again, your First Amendment rights and Second Amendment rights. They're going to they're gonna keep taxation reasonable. You know, they think government should... Stay out of the way and let people pursue freedom and everything. This is when they're running for office. And then they get elected, and it's just the opposite. It's like, ah, take everybody's guns. Confiscate firearms from citizens. You know, this is California today. The government's in charge. Government should tell you how to live your life and what to do. And you, you have no rights. You have no liberties. The government is your authority. Uh, bow down to our government authority. This is what leftists, this is how they typically run. Now it's just all out in the open. It's like, you know, tear down the borders, you know, just let everybody flood in, invade the country. 
Uh, shut down the prisons, you know, uh, fire all the police, uh, total chaos and lawlessness nationwide. And then in the chaos, they want to go, you know, execute the president, overthrow the White House, overthrow the country, nullify the Constitutional Republic, end the democratic process, you know, gut the Electoral College, all these things that they're demanding. <clears throat> and they keep demanding these things just with increasing frequency. It's like, they cannot stand for a civil society to exist around them. And that's led me to the conclusion that leftists are no longer qualified to participate in a civil society. And this is a big deal. I should have mentioned this earlier in the show. But I've, I've come to this conclusion reluctantly, after a lot of thought, that left-wing people cannot coexist in a civil society. They are deranged. They are mentally ill. They are lunatics. They're violent. They're dangerous. They're psychotic and they're illiterate. They don't understand how anything works. They don't recognize cause and effect. All their ideas are bad ideas. Everything that they try to do when they gain power, they destroy systems. They destroy cities like Detroit. They destroy countries like Venezuela. And if they get in charge of our global world, they will destroy human civilization. That's my point today. If the globalists win, humanity loses. That should be the subtitle. If the globalists win, humanity loses. The only way to save humanity is to defeat globalism, which means defeating leftists, defeating Democrats. And there are a multitude of ways to do that. But the best way is to vote them out of power, diminish the Democrat Party, make them extinct. Never vote for a Democrat again. Walk away from that party if you supported them in the past. Vote for anybody but a Democrat. If you love America and you love your life and your liberty and you love humanity, then you've got to defeat these tremendously destructive, evil, fascist forces that the left is now pushing and, and asserting and promoting and globalism and all of that. Uh, mass hypnosis of the population. Uh, <laughs> censorship of truth. Uh, Facebook's been banning all these natural health channels. You know, Google's been banning everybody. YouTube's been banning all pro-liberty channels and, and Second Amendment channels. It's bad. They're, they're waging war on us. They're waging war on humanity. And I haven't even begun talking about the depopulation agenda. That's a whole nother show, okay? We'll get to that later. I'm going to have an, a whole broadcast on that because I'm about out of time for this show. But look, stay in the fight. Have courage. Stay informed. Keep watching Infowars.com. Keep watching CounterThink.com. Join my video platform, Real.Video. Keep spreading the word. Keep fighting for humanity. And we can beat this thing. And we can survive. And we can have a future. But if the left wins, we as a species are finished. So humanity is worth saving. Humanity is worth fighting for. I want to thank you for your support. And I want to ask you to join me in this fight for human freedom and human sustainability. This is CounterThink. Thanks for watching.